Hi guys, it's Jason with At Hortus, and today we're going to cover the topic of propagating proteas from cuttings. Um, here I have a King Protea. This is a uh, you know, Protea cyanoroides. Um, you know, it has that pink flower, really uh, beautiful, huge blooms. I'll attach a photo here. And um, what we're going to need in order to propagate these Protea are going to be, of course, your rooting hormone. The product that I like to use is called Hormex 16 or number 16. Um, normally it is as a powder. Now I do have this just uh, broken up with some water because this is um, running a little low on my usable stock and uh, I have some new ones coming on the way, but it's in liquid form. Though the percentage is still gonna be just the same. Um, this is Hormex 16. Um, the next tool that you'll need is going to be a pair of really nice, clean, sharp pruners. These are Coronas. Uh, I really like them as well. Um, I have typically a pair of uh, Felco pruners that I use, Felco 2s. Uh, I really enjoy those. I find those um, a lot better. But of course, Coronas are also really good tools uh, nonetheless. Um, you're going to need a container to uh, be able to put your cutting into once it's been uh, uh, prepped for uh, planting. And then the last thing is you're going to need your mix of what this cutting is going to go into. Now, uh, the mix that I use is going to be two parts sand two parts peat and one part perlite, and you'll see a picture here of that arrangement. Um, but this mix is here, I haven't mixed it yet, I will do so shortly, and you know, let's get into it. Um, before, actually, before we get into that, I just wanna share with you the hoodie. Let me, let me go ahead and turn around there. Hoodie's looking really fine there. If you guys are interested, let me know, and um, you know, we can probably uh, figure out something, get you some hoodies. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Um, so what we're going to need, I'm going to set these tools aside and I'm going to set the pot aside as well, is we're going to need to pick a really nice branch. So this plant has been with me for a couple years now. It's been used as my mother plant for, I mean, I can't even, actually since, since I got it really. Um, you know, I take many cuttings off of it. I've never really seen a flower on it just because uh, every time you prune a Protea, a King Protea particularly back, um, it doesn't want to bloom back immediately. So the branch itself needs to mature a certain amount of time, typically like a year or so before it'll want to flower on that particular branch. Um, and so, you know, I'm just repeatedly using this for cutting material, hence, you know, the, the fullness that you see here because uh, every time I'm cutting it, the plant is uh, flushing back with new growth. And so this just gives me more cutting stock to work with. So. Um, probably in the span of me having this plant, I've taken over like a hundred cuttings or so. And so uh, it's, you know, a reliable plant. It's very uh, well growing, but the principles that come out of this video here can be applied to any other protea. So um, I'm looking at this plant now. I would say I see a really pretty branch here. It's got a really good, I would say pencil thickness to it. Uh, maybe a standard number two pencil. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this portion right here. So the length of your cutting should typically be uh, about six inches or so. Um, four to six is fine. If four, if your plant is small or you need to be a little bit conservative with the nodes, uh, six is ideal. Uh, it gives it plenty of length uh, to have nodes on and you know it's a lot more opportunity for your plant to flush. Oftentimes too, the longer your stalk is, the more carbohydrates there are stored inside of the um, stem itself, allowing you a better opportunity to have it strike. Uh, as you can see, I've taken off the top here. So the reason why I take off the top is I've had a couple run-ins where my cuttings have actually flowered. Um, and so by removing the top, it locks the plant into uh, only being able to produce a vegetative uh, branch. And that's what we're looking for. We want this stock or this cutting to eventually become a plant. So by taking off the top portion, we don't run into the risk of it trying to flower and that'll delay uh, the process moving forward. Uh, I have the cutting here and I'm going to go ahead and pluck the bottom half. Now some people will take off the bottom two thirds. I will typically pluck until there's about three or four leaves on the cutting, about that there and that will typically do it. Um, you don't need to go super high on it. Uh, by taking too many leaves, that'll also slow down the process. 
uh, of it being able to strike because you know even though it doesn't have a root system it's still transpiring and you want to keep enough leaves on there so that it can still acquire uh, light energy and eventually strike though not too many as to then dry it out um, so we have our prepped cutting here looks really good I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut so the cut that we are shooting for is a 45 degree angle it's probably a little steeper than that and that's totally fine um, some people will do flat cuts I know a lot of growers that uh, prefer using the flat cuts and it's totally fine it's just my personal preference to do that uh, slanted cut uh, just because I feel like with more surface area that allows it a better opportunity to strike somewhere along this um, cambium here so I'm gonna go ahead and leave my cutting inside of the rooting hormone uh, people will do quick dips and whatnot I'd say about 10 seconds will uh, often do it for my cuttings and Hormex 16 is about 1.6 percent um, by most propagation terms that's a pretty strong concentration um, but that's where I've seen the most successes on my part uh, anything lighter can give you results but um, I haven't been able to get that type of result as I would with 1.6 percent so um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my mix ready here so again that was the mix that I mentioned earlier and you're gonna fill it up to the top here make sure you give it a tab get out any air bubbles and that's good you don't need to compress it down or anything you can do that after and so now with our cutting nice and dipped you can see there's that little foam there I shook it up quite a bit earlier um, it's nice and coated I'm gonna go ahead and stick it down to about that first or that bottom most leaf that we have on the cutting and then at that point you can go ahead and pack it in around the sides like that and that's nice and sturdy there you can always give it a little wiggle if it is uh, wiggling and moving around then that means you haven't packed it well enough so um, go ahead and try it again and just get it really packed and from this point on it's just gonna sit and hang out for until it strikes and now we have a couple of questions in regards to that um, how long does it take typically the time for a cutting to strike would be about four to six months um, it can oftentimes be a little longer if you have uh, a cooler environment if you have a little bit more shade that the cutting is sitting in um, my cuttings are sitting in on a west side it gets about half day and there is shade cloth over it but that warmth through the, uh, the sunny day and everything and also the reflected heat from my uh, the wall of my property uh, bouncing onto the cuttings uh, really promotes that um, the goal of having um, the best environment for these cuttings would be about 76 degrees root temperature now that doesn't mean air temperature it could be a 90 degree day it could be super cold day if you are able to supply that 76 degrees consistently into the root zone or into the soil column uh, that will help trigger the uh, rooting event um, other than that uh, ideally again four to six months uh, when it comes to care for it uh, just water it you know you don't need any kind of fertilizer uh, you don't need to add any supplements any um, b1 any little thing like that um, it's all about just keeping it hydrated so don't let the cell or uh, the uh, container dry out completely you want to be able to keep it generally moist if the surface feels dry to the touch uh, on top then you can go ahead and give it a deep water or perhaps if it's lost maybe um, you know 20 percent of its weight there then you should probably rehydrate it um, other than that you know it's all about time keep it away from those adverse conditions and you know in no time you'll get something really good um, just give me a second I'm gonna go ahead and grab a rooted cutting that I have and I can show off a couple of features there and actually the next step after that what happens okay guys so uh, in front of me here I took a couple of uh, rooted cuttings that have been successful of uh, the King Protea and we're gonna go ahead and focus in here now I took two here to show you because um, there was actually one that I did on purpose so that I could show you what happens if you never take off that tip you can see that of course that top end has dried significantly and nothing's really going on there now what the plant will do is shut down that top node and actually uh, produce a node somewhere off on the side at some point but unfortunately that takes quite a bit of time 
Now I'm going to show you here. You can see that little bit of white and pink right there. Those are actually the adventitious roots that are popping out from the cutting there. So that is a successful sign there that the plant has now rooted and in theory is a rooted plant. Uh, from this point on, we will go ahead and plant it in a medium very similar to this. Ideally, it's been rooting in a medium like this, and if you started it in the container, then you're good to go. You just let it root completely in there. If you do it in a small tray, you can transplant them out. Uh, just be a little careful. I do have videos on that in regards to how to transplant cuttings and small plants. And we're going to go ahead and bring this over here. So you can see, when you cut off the tip here, you get almost a different result. Um, the physiology is a little different. You can see here at the top, it's pushing that node out, that little that little uh, cone right there would be the new node that's gonna pop out and eventually you'll get a brand new little sprig that looks you know, very similar to a mini version of what you'll see on your mother plant because exa that's exactly it. It's a brand new little branch. You can see what happens at the base of the cutting is that instead of that long um, slender cylinder that we saw earlier, there's actually swelling that occurs at the base of this cutting. You see that there's a flare. Right? Very similar to a lot of our um, you know, plants that we have in the ground, there's that root flare that occurs. So in the process of it rooting and striking, the morphology of the base uh, decides to change and then it um, becomes more conducive and open in order for these roots to pop through. You can see there's these uh, little adventitious roots popping out from the side and at the bottom at every end. Now, if I were to do a flat cut, perhaps this would happen in just the same way. But you can see I actually did that diagonal cut. If you can follow with me here, the diagonal ran this way right here. Let me just slough off some of this soil here. That diagonal cut ran there and you can see the rooting happened along every single bit of it. So. Um, if you ask me uh, whether you should do a flat or diagonal cut, I mean, there's your answer right there. You get a lot more surface area for it to root into. And so, uh, long story short, once you have it at this stage, I do have a video in regards to how to care for your cuttings and seedlings um, in their early phases. Um, so do uh, reference that in order to um, you know make sure that they survive. And other than that, guys, good luck. Um, it's not hard. It's just you have to be patient and just make sure that you don't leave your plants and your cuttings up to chance. Uh, do protect them, keep them sheltered, and um, you know just take that time to check them you know make sure they're watered well and at some point you will see that new growth up top you can always do a little tug test to see if there's resistance great that's probably taken um, but if it's just popping out then um, you know press it back in pack it again give it more time um, one of those troubleshooting things to do is if you see that your cutting has discolored or the foliage has now dried completely the cutting has probably not taken and so in that event you're gonna go ahead and just get rid of it and you know just start over typically um, I don't do just one at a time I'm doing them like f groups of 40 and 50 in a tray and you know you know thank goodness my last uh, attempt at it um, I actually got probably only two that didn't take but everything else did so that's about 38 I know and we're gonna head over there and uh, take a look at them shortly uh, but yeah that's like really good uh, in most terms and that's just me following this recipe on this video um, other than that, um, you know, let's let's head on over there and I can show you what I currently have. But um, if you guys have any questions, um, please do uh, reach out at, at hortus at gmail.com or you can comment on the YouTube video. I try my best to be as fast as I can with it. And um, perfect. Let's go take a look at those other ones. Hey guys, so now we are on the east end of things. And um, this is the side that I typically will have my material bulk out. Um, you know, the whole point of it being is that it gets the morning sun, it's a lot more gentle, and I actually don't have any cover on these. Um, I also have, you know, the big wall that absorbs a lot of warmth and reflects it later in the day once the sun has passed. And um, in particular here, this is my tray of uh, king cuttings that I was talking about. You can just take a look at that. There's the original uh, stalk at the bottom, and then there is the flush of the new uh, material there up top. It's nuts. You can see all this beautiful new growth, really lush. I had a couple that may have went through the hot day there and that's why you wanna to try to protect them. But the plant is still healthy nonetheless. Um, I have it here in these deep cells that, you know, so if you're starting them out in the shallow trays, you can go ahead and um, then re 
you'll replant them into these cells and that'll cultivate out that taproot or a deeper root system and eventually you'll have this deep cell that you can tr uh, transplant into an actual pot and become um, you know full-on plants but if you like this guys uh, please do uh, like and subscribe I really am uh, trying to get this thing to take off and be able to get you guys more content so um, if you guys have again any questions just let me know uh, but yeah let's do one last pan here to show you the the rest of my uh, stuff here these are all the other seedlings and uh, eventually as I expand this out we're gonna have a lot more uh, cuttings joining the party here I'm just starting to get to work now because the season's right. But yeah guys, thank you so much.